Welcome to this latest edition of Share Views, brought to you by London South East. That's lse.co.uk. Joining me today is Alessio Rostani, CEO and founder at LeadingTrader.com. Welcome, Alessio. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, rather than explain, uh, than me explain what a whiz you are at technical analysis, why don't you actually explain yourself? Actually, I wouldn't agree with that. I don't think I'm a whiz at technical analysis. I wish I was. I certainly hope that I can. Um, uh, Certainly, one of the things that I've found is the markets are probably the best teacher. Uh, I'm, I would say I'm a student of the markets, and we're always learning. And um, it, it, is, it is often a danger to think of oneself as being overly smart and being an, an expert in, say, technical analysis or in any subject, purely because what often that does, it, um, it stops you from learning. Uh, and I've found that markets are constantly evolving. Uh, markets are constantly changing. New patterns develop, and some of the old patterns that used to work when you're trying to analyze the markets don't work anymore. So you have to be able to adapt, um, and you got to learn. Uh, so uh, certainly, I think um, I, I think I've learned a lot from the markets. I've been, markets been my best teacher, and I hope to improve uh, going forward. And what are you seeing? What what, what stands out in the markets uh, for you currently? Uh, it's interesting. Basically, one of the thing, one of the patterns that I follow is like I look for. I think the thing that uh, I, I find the most rewarding is looking for turning points. Uh, I'm not a counter trend sort of investor or trader, I, I, but I do like to find um, opportunity. The markets become so beaten down. For example, uh, when a market or uh, an asset class like gold, oil, whatever kind of stocks you're looking at, when they become so extremely hated that everybody starts avoiding them, that's when I become interested. Um, I guess you could call, it, call that a contrarian. A uh, famous uh, trader, his name is Paul Tudor Jones, he once said that uh, to be a good trader, to some extent you have to be a contrarian. And that often means that you have to do the opposite what everybody else is doing. I mean, Warren Buffett's been saying that for a long time, you know, be afraid or be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are uh, fearful. Uh, so what I look for are usually markets, um, s trades where everyone is avoiding them, people are afraid, but that doesn't mean just go and buy them. No, what do you do, that? You, what you do then is you look for uh, signals, uh, patterns, I look at the charts, for example, where you might be able to find a good buying opportunity at a very good discount. Uh, so that's one of the things that I look for, and uh, I, I think I, I, I consider that to be one of my strengths. Donald Trump was driving the markets yesterday with his fire and fury directed at North Korea. <laughs> right. Um, how are markets reacting to today's news of a potential yeah. four missiles being mm -hmm. uh, being uh, sent into the sea next to Guam, which of course is uh, a U.S. territory and therefore significant to the U.S. Well, two markets that I keep an eye on, S&P 500, the main stock market index in the U.S. I do look at the FTSE 100 too, but S&P is very important. And also the volatility index, uh, the VIX. Um, now, we have not seen that much of a negative reaction to this news about North Korea. I mean, sure, the S&P fell by a few, I mean, it fell down uh, yesterday, I think it was, uh, but, it, but it managed to recover. That's the thing, it managed to recover by the end of the closing day. Volatility index, the VIX, again, we have not seen a major fluctuation to the upside yet. However, having said that, uh, Jeffrey Gunlock, I think his name is, and he's called the Bond King, the new Bond King. He recently said that he's buying, is going very aggressively long. He's buying the volatility, ET, he's buying short-term volatility, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, ETFs or something like that. So essentially he's betting on volatility. He's betting on uh, volatility increasing. Now whether he's going to be right or not, I don't know. But What do you feel about that? I, here's what I know from uh, history uh, or statistics. Markets usually drop significantly, mostly on economic bad news, not on political bad news. Because sure, you can have some political event like North Korea or you know, Iran, something to do with nuclear weapons. And that. Sure, that could cause a little bit of uncertainty and panic. But if, at the end of the day, what investors and what Wall Street, what they really care about is the key numbers, econ the, econ the economic numbers, job growth, 
uh, central banks, uh, they, their announcements. That's what they really care about. Capital e economics. We're yeah. talking about the economic bad news of yeah. a peninsula war, mm -hmm. which basically, if, you've, if you understand that uh, mm -hmm. uh, South Korea is the f uh, fourth largest electronics mm -hmm. good producer in the world, mm -hmm. well, if you imagine the supply chains are going to get disrupted, uh, people aren't going to be able to buy their smartphones and so on, uh, South Korea provides all sorts of, of back-end electronic bits and pieces. Um, so there will be an economic impact. But hey, yeah. it's a big if, isn't it? Because I mean, there is no I, war there at the moment. Yeah. If, let's say the worst case scenario came about. And let's say North Korea, Kim Jong-un, decided to respond quite aggressively to Donald Trump's um, uh, strong words a couple of days ago. But having said that, I think that would not be in their interest. North Korea knows, their regime knows, that if they do the worst you know, thing possible, they will be destroyed. I mean, within a few days, you know, America will respond. So that will cause a destruction. Um, but I did actually hear a report that the first thing that North Korea would do if they decided to act and re retaliate would be to launch an attack on Seoul, uh, on the capital of South Korea. So It's within the artillery range. Yeah, I mean, they could, fancy. I, think they, I think the report said they could level out uh, the capital of South Korea very quickly. Uh, will they do that? No, because if they do, that will definitely uh, seal you know, their fate very fast. Uh, I would say, though, I think the... So here's one thing I just want to add to that. Mm -hmm. the, the area which people should focus on in terms of economy is China. China credit growth has bubbled... It can, actually gone into a bubble territory. So that would be the first area of concern. If, if the Chinese economy started collapsing, that could have a major impact on other areas of the economy. Uh, and secondly, as I mentioned before, while a North Korean um, dispute or... Uh, any kind of uh, aggression could cause a stock market to drop because of the uncertainty, that drop would be a buying opportunity, not something to be afraid of. So if you see news about North Korea coming out and you see the stock market is coming, dropping, wait for uh, a buying opportunity around that because the markets will quickly bounce back up. In fact, history has shown it to be correct. The only time when markets don't kind of bounce back up quickly is the economic news. Again, just to show you. If you look back at the Donald Trump's election, the night when he got elected, when Trump become, became president, markets tanked. I mean, they fell down by a couple of hundred points, but then they quickly recovered by the next day. Because at the end of the day, what investors, uh, Wall Street really cares about is the economy, the, the, the numbers, the job growth, uh, the central banks, not so much North Korea and all that kind of stuff. Gold has been seen as a safe yeah. haven at the moment. We're at a yeah. two-month high. Yes. Uh, what's your point of view on gold? Yeah, gold, actually, I, I always like to have um, some, some uh, investments in gold. I do already have. Uh, and it's, it's a good idea. Now, traditionally, it's been said that gold, uh, gold has been referred to as chaos insurance. So as an insurance policy, if chaos issued in the world. In the past, that, that has turned out to be a mixed response. Sometimes gold does go up when there's been a lot of uncertainty. There was actually, just, be just before Brexit and just before um, Donald Trump became president, you see a steady rise in the gold prices. And I think that could happen again. If we see more... Have we missed our buying opportunity? No, no, you haven't. It's at a two-month high? No, or do actually, you expect it to go a little bit further? I certainly told uh, our members on Leading Trader to get, in, get into silver. Actually, silver was my trade of the month last month. We got into silver and also gold. I mentioned as How well. How do you trade silver? Do you actually buy the buy the physical companies which uh, mine the mine the product, or do you actually go, you could, go you futures? Could, you could buy futures. Very risky to buy the futures, though. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that to beginners or folks who have not traded futures. What's the safe way? Um, ETFs. So you can buy ETFs like SLV, which gives you exposure to uh, silver bullion, or GLD, uh, the ETF for gold. Or um, you could go and buy. Uh, I remember a good friend of mine who works in Morgan Stanley. He said to me that he does not have any, any investments in gold bullion or silver bullion. He buys the gold stocks. So gold stock ETFs, uh, in, in other words, index funds that track gold stocks, mine, gold miners. So uh, look at GDX. Uh, sort of a proxy. for. for uh, yes, exactly. Uh, so you could buy, in other words, an index fund that gives you exposure to uh, gold miners, gold mining stocks. Um, and those actually are far more safer than owning uh, individual gold stocks. A number of different companies have released mm -hmm. uh, results this morning, including the estate agent Savills, yep. the upmarket estate agent Savills. Uh, what do you read into Savills results? I can't say I'm an expert on Savills, but having said that, I do, do track their price 
because uh, one thing that your, your viewers may be interested in is that um, if, if you want to know the state of the housing market in the UK, it's always a good idea to keep an eye on Savills because they predict the price of Savills was a good indicator, leading indicator of how the housing market's doing and how it did back in 2007. So keep an eye on it because uh, in 2007, right before the housing crash, you could you could see Savills share prices were falling, but also they were a good indication of when to buy as well. So you, right now, I, I don't see any warning signs on the housing market. Uh, I do agree with Jim Rogers who said that the housing market in the UK has become a bit of a bubble. I think nobody could disagree with that. It has been a bubble. Certainly in London, I would say, uh, it has become a turn into a bubble. They have come down slightly. I mean, their recent house prices should have fallen down. But here's the thing. Uh, I, I'm not the kind of person who goes against the trend. So the trend is still up. And so keep an eye on the FTSE one. Here's one thing. Here's what I want to finish with this. One of the most ignored market, one of the most ignored stocks in the world are European stocks. UK, UK stocks and European stocks are ignored by Americans, wrongly. And that's a good thing if you're a contrarian. So if you want to be looking at an area of the stock market that's been ignored, uh, undervalued, and could potentially go higher, that's European stocks and UK stocks. So I'm, I'm still long on that. That's it for now. Thanks to Alessio Rastani, CEO and founder at LeadingTrader.com. Thanks to you for watching, and that's it from this edition of Share Views, brought to you by London Southeast.